Hi, everybody. Uh, how are you guys doing today? All right. Okay, sorry, guys. Um, so, um, I'm going to talk to you about uh, blockchain from a perspective of a lawyer in Silicon Valley. So, uh, my perspective is usually I have uh, people in the U.S. looking at blockchain assets, or I have startups uh, coming and trying to you know, raise money from investors for uh, blockchain uh, projects. Um, and it is sort of a challenge for uh, folks uh, both on the investor side and <clears throat> on the startup side to talk about um, uh, blockchain. Okay, so I want you to think about um, investing um, and imagine that you're Peter Thiel and Mark Zuckerberg just showed up at your doorfront in uh, Palo Alto in uh, 2005. And he gives you like this great idea, you know, I have face, I'm building this uh, decentralized way to connect with people. And you're Peter Thiel, you've just exited um, PayPal, and you see this kid, and it makes sense. So how do you invest in him, anybody? What would like a traditional venture capitalist do? He would invest in the company, so he would buy equity in the company, so he would be buying centralized ownership of an asset. That asset is Facebook. And right now, uh, the whole venture community or the investor class is thinking in terms of uh, Web uh, 1.0. So that's their old world. They think about in terms of ownership and taking ownership like they took ownership in the 17th century when they created company, first companies were created to uh, uh, build colonies, uh, go get coffee, or spices. So that's, you know, how, when the companies came. And right now, we're coming to a new brave world, and it's the world of cryptocurrency and protocols and blockchain. So the issue is, how do we invest in blockchain? Do we invest in companies? Do we invest in cryptocurrency? Or do we invest in protocol? This is an important conversation that is going on on Medium, on Twitter, or how should people invest in the new asset class that's called um, blockchain. And there are people like um, Union Square Ventures that's building the ecosystem of uh, blockchain investing. There's Andreessen Horowitz, there's uh, startups all over um, the world that are uh, popping up. But there are challenges, and the challenge is how do you invest in a protocol um, as an investor? And how do you, as a startup, translate your protocol into something investable from the perspective of traditional venture, ca uh, venture capital? And there is a disconnect. So understanding the blockchain. So um, uh, we have Bitcoin, we have Ethereum. There's multiple asset classes of blockchain and it's super crucial for people who are building um, blockchain startups to precisely describe the type of asset class and what um, the blockchain does because you know it, it's important to understand if you're selling apples oranges or ur uranium and a lot of times um, the traditional world considers blockchain um, as uranium Therefore, it's dangerous, and uh, there are certain um, bumps in the road for people who are building this. So, uh, if you're build, if and you might not even know that you have uh, a uranium asset uh, in your garage, and you know you're coding something, and you don't even realize that uh, this asset class is prohibited. And I'm going to give you a couple of um, examples. So. Meet Howie. Now, Howie is a case uh, from the United States um, a court from 1946. And um, I'm not going to bore you about the details, but the US Supreme Court decided that a real estate contract um, is a security. So uh, it means that uh, you can buy it just like this. Um, and it's regulated, and to buy it, you need to be an accredited investor. And in that case, um, there's a test. And uh, a security, by the way, 
uh, can only be uh, bought by an accredited investor, um, and that accredited investor has to have certain um, qualifications, financial qualifications mostly. So it's not uh, over the counter. You can't buy this at your uh, local pharmacy. Um, it's not at Tesco. This is you know restricted. You have to um, have certain qualifications. So um, and if you sell this um, security, uh, you can go to jail in the U.S. So it's super important and it has implications for uh, blockchain folks who are building things outside of the U.S. And this case also is um, a game stopper for people in the U.S. who are investing. Um, and right now, I think in mid-December 2016, so like uh, two months ago, uh, Coinbase, um, USV, and a couple of other players uh, created uh, best practices to avoid getting in trouble with Howie. So what is Howie? So Howie, um, if, if you have a feature of the blockchain that um, you require an investment of money, uh, there's a common enterprise, uh, and there's an expectation of profits, and let me emphasize this, from the efforts of others, you could be in trouble with um, uh, U.S. security law. Are people shocked about this? Okay, um, I guess not. I've, everybody knows everything. That's great. I'm, I'm really glad that people are trying to build things that are uh, not uranium. Okay, so um, I'm an error. So you don't want to build a product that from day one um, has error and uh, can get you in trouble. So it's super, as I said in the beginning, it's super important to understand uh, the quality and the type of asset, um, blockchain asset you're building. So how do you get around this? Um, how do you get around Howie? And you know, in law school, this is like you know the case number one. They always tell you about Howie. And you know, usually business and startup people don't care about the law, but this is like you know where you really have to be awake. So um, you don't want to be in an error. And in the world of securities, we have IPOs. So Snap has its IPO right now, and in the coin world, we have the initial coin offering, or in short, ICO. So um, how do you offer your uh, blockchain um, um, in a proper way. And again, you know, there's a lot of experimentation. Um, so there's like these sandbox. So there's the Swiss model, uh, and Ethereum is an example of that, where you have a foundation set up in Switzerland, which is um, uh, the organizer of Ethereum. You can also have different models, right? So um, the first thing venture capitalists would ask you is, hey, uh, startup folks, uh, founder, do you have an entity we can invest in? So for example, you know, in the US it would be a C Corp, in Germany it would be a GmbH, in Poland it would be a Zoo. So in your world, you really don't want to create that entity because you're just building blockchain and you're decentralized and you don't need a central um, agency. So you don't need to create an entity. You should, you know, I'm not going to, um, I should have said my disclaimers before, but um, um, I'll, say, I'll say them now. I'm not trying to encourage you to break the law or avoid taxes, and we're not going to have an attorney-client relationship. But, you know, uh, if you're building things here, you should try to, you know, make sure that you don't have any U.S. nexus. And it's very important. So, you know, avoid, if you can, in your you know terms of services or you know um, your um, uh, white papers, uh, any U.S. activities. You know it it might be you know a good idea for um, the beginning. Um, and the other thing you know you guys probably can tell tell me this better, but you know token holders should vote about you know what happens to the money, how it's distributed. So this is you know initial coin offering basics. Um, and then uh, I want to talk about best practices. I mentioned the Coinbase um, project um, for best guidelines. 
not to get into um, a U.S. security. So the idea of these best practices to, is to avoid Howie. So um, publish your white paper. So that's important, right? So you're disclosing how this whole thing works. Um, then for pre-sale of your tokens, uh, create the development roadmap. And this is, again, uh, important to show how the system works. And you want to be as uh, clear about it as possible. So logical, you have to show fair pricing for the token. And um, in terms of your team that's uh, building um, the project or uh, the token, you should also set aside uh, an X number of tokens for your team. So this is, you know, for the going forward project. Um, and again, the last point, which I think is, you know, super crucial, is don't market your token as an investment. And this is super tricky, right? Because um, how are you going to uh, market your product as not an, as, as an investment? Are you going to market it as a product for personal consumption? Um, so you know you're going to use it, and you know it's something again. And I want to stress the uh, concept of investment uh, and for profit. So if you add additional fact elements to the token to make it less for profit and less investable. Um, Again, that if there is an element of for profitability, there's common enterprise from the efforts of others, you might have a Howie situation. So um, I also want to tell you that uh, there are a lot of people who want to invest in um, tokens and blockchain technology, but it's very complicated for them to um, understand the world you're trying to build, and they're thinking in terms of uh, Web 1.0, Facebook, Twitter, and that's their world. So it's super crucial for you as startup founders in the blockchain space to understand the whole issue with Howie, and it also gives you uh, the rationale why, for example, a lot of US investors, when they hear blockchain, they're scared and they have issues with due diligence. So um, this is you know, a, a short presentation. Uh, I welcome questions. Um, good luck with your projects. Uh, and go, uh, go big or go home uh, if you're your meet in Poland. Bye. So thank you very much. Uh, so I think we're now ready to move to the most important part of the meetup, which is uh, questions. Uh, which is questions. <laughs> okay, so there's questions. I can pass the mic later to you. Um, it's actually not a question to you, to those, but the founders of startups who are present here. I would like to hear their comments on the best practices that you mentioned, or what were your struggles around the, the issues that, that you yes, mentioned? But Is there, are there any volunteers to share their experiences? Should Golem go first? Yeah, well, well I know this list. <laughs> so I, I don't know this presentation, but we, we even commented uh, minutes before that, that we know this list. And of course, we, we know how we test. So, like, mm, this is not a, a good news, but, but a crowdfunding project at the moment is an art of uh, diplomacy, I, I would say. So you, uh, you, you, you don't say directly what you want to communicate. And, and this is, of course, somehow bad, because this is the result of, of the missing legal framework. Uh, what, what is more this missing legal framework sometimes compromise functionalities because you, you, you cannot do the most obvious things you, you, you would like to do with, with, your, uh, with your design. But on, on the other hand, I, I also think uh, it, is, it is for the better because this, this technology, this uh, area now is, is much um, um, hyped, much overhyped, uh, I would even say. So this, this, this balances things a little bit that you uh, that you 
take care to use use proper wording. Um, my personal opinion is that if you if you see someone advertising uh, uh, actions of the startup as ICO, that means that this person has not talked to to his lawyer. Uh, and and this is like the the, the, the first red flag <laughs> for for me for, for, for the project. So I, I could elaborate much longer for that because we, we have just finished the, the, that process. But perhaps um, I, I I would I would comment more on the during the break because too much to come. Yeah, you know uh, I work with a couple of blockchain companies. Um, and it's funny how um, investors are using traditional methods to invest, uh, and they're trying to you know figure out how to, you know they want a piece of the action, they want to have a piece of the pie, they want to be on the next big thing, but their methodology of investing is slightly behind, and it takes a lot to you know um, tell them that they can invest in this using traditional methods uh, which doesn't jeopardize the characteristics and the opportunity of uh, blockchain so for example you know uh, in germany you, in germany you had neue fund raise a couple of uh, million dollars for uh, blockchain uh, activities and they did it you know their way uh, there's USV investing in companies that are building in building protocols. So there's different ways to approach this, um, and everyone is experimenting. Anyone would like other comments? Guys, you're so timid. The energy level here is like <laughs> below the price of uh, Bitcoin today. Go ahead. Is it is it because we have a lawyer here? Um, do we have to be afraid of regulators? I mean, I just saw one example, the company Overstock, who went under the scheme of the SEC. Are there reasons for this? Yeah, I mean, uh, so the question is, should uh, blockchain folks be afraid of regular uh, regulators? And I think the answer is, the lawyer answer is, it depends. <laughs> um, I think, you know, the old world is afraid of the new things that are coming, and there's legal infrastructure set up to prevent people doing certain things. So, you know, the Howey test is one. Uh, Anti-money laundering uh, laws are another thing. There's consumer protection laws, and they're in place for a reason. And I think, you know, as uh, blockchain enthusiasts, we have to um, create, you know, products people want and at the same time lobby our regulators to change the law to make things work. And uh, there are, um, at least in Europe, there's these concepts of um, legal sandboxes for fintech um, experimentation. Portugal has it, I think Belgium has it. Uh, Switzerland... Yeah, the doesn't occur. Yeah, so I think, you know, it depends. I think there was another question. Questions? Uh, yeah. And how, how to to avoid um, how to how to prevent Americans from buying those ICO tokens because you see that those uh, Huawei test applies when you um, when you have at least one person from United United States involved in operations. Right. I mean, again, you know. Um in general, you know, if you're offering tokens to Americans, you should be careful, and that's um, my sort of, you know, headline for the meetup. Um, I would love to talk about, you know, details of, you know, how to do it, but I think it's too technical for um, the meetup, and you know, I, I might also want to um, earn a buck um, and start billing. <laughs> So, so, just in general terms, you would say you should avoid marketing to American people, or you should avoid them buying at any price. And uh, I think you, you know, I think again it depends, right? Uh, the U.S. is the biggest, uh, you know, Bitcoin market, right? Um, like right after China, I think. Right after China, so you know, you can't really avoid the biggest market. The investors are there for. Uh, 
blockchain and people are very open to risk. So, you know, it depends. But again, you know, you have to be very careful with blockchains and there's so much, you know, regulation as the gentleman said before that you might not even know that you've triggered something um, accidentally. Okay. I think that's it. Do we have more questions? Thank you.